Our goal for this video is to be introduced to what's called the unit circle. And the unit circle is basically an important uh, device we use in mathematics. And it is a circle, the blue circle, and it's called the unit circle because it has a radius of one. So if, I, if my little yellow pen here is the radius arm, and it's anchored at zero, zero, the origin, its radius is always one. And we get these points where it touches each of the axes, axes which are the regular Cartesian X, Y axes that we're familiar with. And what I want to do is use this and this, which is called the table of exact values, to generate some very important values. And the goal for you is to memorize what's in this table because having a working knowledge of this will help you with what's called exact values. Okay, so where did these exact values come from? Consider two triangles. This first triangle here in pink is an equilateral triangle. So I had an equilateral triangle. As you know, equilateral triangles all have the same angles, 60, 60, and 60, and each of the side lengths is two. So it's a non-right angle triangle, and all the angles are the same, and all the side lengths are the same. What I've then done is bisect that. So I've put a line straight down from the top vertex, bisecting that angle. So I've got two 30s there, and we have two right angles there, and so that would be one, and that would be one. And we can use one of those two identical triangles to generate some values. If we looked at this triangle here, and we said, what is sine 60 there? Okay, well, we need a letter for this bisector here. I'm going to call that H for height. And so sine 60 is H over, because it's opposite, over hypotenuse. But we can find a value for H. So remember Pythagoras' theorem, and basically um, we've got two of, you can see this triangle here, the right hand one. It's a right angle triangle where we've got the hypotenuse squared equals one of the short sides squared plus h squared. Okay, so we can rearrange that. It's a short side. So that would be 2 squared take 1 squared, or 4 take 1. So h would be the square root of 3, because that's 3. And we leave that because that's an irrational number. It would be a non-terminating decimal. So we can actually put that in there. So getting back to what we said, sine 60 is opposite over hypotenuse, which is root 3 on 2. And so root 3 on 2 is sine 60. Sine 60 is root 3 on 2. And we can go through and repeat that then with cos. Okay, so cosine is adjacent. So starting at the 60, adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 1 half. And then we've got tan 60. I better put my cos 60 in here. We've got tan 60. Tan is opposite over adjacent. So we've got root 3 over 1, which I'm just going to leave as root 3 here. So tan 60, root 3 over 1, opposite over adjacent. Tan 60, root 3 over 1, which is just root 3. So square root of 3. Okay, so we've got our 60 degree angles. Well, this is a 30 degree angle up here, so how can we com complete this pattern? So sine of 30 is opposite over hypotenuse, which is a half. Okay, so sine of 30 is a half, and so, all right, and repeating cos 30, cos of 30 is adjacent over hypotenuse. All right, root three over two. Tan 30 opposite over adjacent. One over root three. Now for the 45 degree angles, we need to try something different here. We've, we've got a second triangle here. This is a right angle triangle and it has one and one there, and using Pythagoras' theorem, the hypotenuse is two, uh, root two, and so that's a 45 degree angle, 
And so is that. Because it's isosceles as well, isosceles and right angle. And so we can generate some values using this for 45 degrees. So tan cos and sine. And so it doesn't matter which 45 degree angle we, we start at because you'll get the same result. So if we start there, for example, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. Interestingly enough, it's the same value. And tan is opposite over adjacent, 1 over 1. 1 over 1 is 1. Okay, so we've generated all those values. Okay, now in part 2, we're going to apply this to the unit circle. So you can see I've uh, added in an extra big unit circle there, and it's still the unit circle. And you might notice that we've got these Roman numerals in here. That means that's called quadrant 1. And see, the radius arm, the convention is for it to swing. It's the opposite to what you might have seen if you've seen bearings before. Bearings go clockwise. The unit circle radius arm convention goes anti-clockwise right around from 0 through to 360 or multiples of 360 you can keep going. So it goes anti-clockwise. So its first quadrant is that, second, third and fourth quadrant. And so they're called quadrants quarters of the circle. Alright, and what we notice that if we look at quadrant 1, there's something interesting about sine, cos and tan in that. So quadrant 1, we've got our radius arm here. All right, that's our radius arm, and it, it can be seen to make a right angle triangle, like so. We've got a y component, all right, because remember this is the y axis, and it's got an x component along here, that distance there, because that corresponds with the x axis. And so we've got some angle here. And sine of that angle, would be opposite over hypotenuse. Now, what do we know about the hypotenuse? It's a unit circle, so it's, that's why I set it up the unit circle, because you will see, look, it is, comes out nice and neatly, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's y over 1, which is just y. So the sine theta is the y component. All right, so as that goes around, that y component it's getting bigger and bigger and it hits its max there and then it gets smaller and smaller. And when, it's, when the radius arm keeps going around like this, its y values become negative. And if the radius arm, the pink radius arm, kept going that away, all right, like that, the y values would shrink down and they'd become zero and then they'd grow again and then they'd be back up to here. And so that's what happens. And the cosine values are uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, which is x over 1, which is just x. So the cosine is all the x values. So as that radius arm there moves around to there, that value gets smaller, that value gets bigger and bigger, and it sort of gets bigger and smaller as this radius arm moves around. Okay, and basically tan is an interesting one. It's, it's interesting because tan is opposite over adjacent, which is y over x. So it's a comparison of y versus x. But for the real thinkers out there, we said sine theta is y and we said cos theta is x. So another way of writing that would be sine theta divided by cos theta. That's an interesting result. So we can use that to find exact values, and that's one of your goals is to be able to do that. So let's look at a few quick examples now where we can apply this. So um, what if we look at sine of 120? Find the exact value. Now that means you're not using your calculator, okay? Um, there's reasons why you shouldn't be using your calculator at certain times, partly for the understanding and also further down the track when you're finding solutions and using the inverse sign, you need to understand the unit circle. So trust me that we're not using the calculator for this. Okay, you can check it at the calculator perhaps. But sine of 120 means that, 
Okay, 120, that's somewhere over there, it's 90 there. So perhaps, in fact, perhaps it's a bit more like this blue line here. It's probably a little bit exaggerated. So let's look at this blue line. And that's 120, so it's 90 plus 30. Okay, so what we need to do is look at an acute angle, which is 90 degrees at the most, okay, under 90 degrees in fact. And we need to look at acute angles above and below. So all the angles we're interested in looking in, looking at, would be all of these angles in here. Okay, not obtuse angles. We're not, and we're looking at the smallest acute angle uh, from the x-axis. So for the rest of this video, what we're going to do is work out um, in quadrants 1, 2, 3 and 4, as the radius arm moves around, we're going to look at values of sine, cos and tan and whether they're positive or negative. And we're going to come up with this thing called ASTC. And that means all sine tan and cos, and that refers to what's going to be positive, going to give a positive result in each of these. And so we've got here a situation here where the radius arm is in the first quadrant, and basically you can see that x, that distance there, moves from 0, 0 along the x-axis, and it's some positive value. The y2 moves up, and it's a positive value. So in quadrant 1, We've got sine is basically a positive over a positive, which gives a positive. In cos in the first quadrant, we've got adjacent over hypotenuse. And that's, uh, sorry, adjacent over hypotenuse, sorry. Okay, so that was opposite over adjacent for sine and adjacent over hypotenuse. We've got positive over positive, which gives a positive. And tan is opposite over adjacent, which is a positive over a positive, which also yields a positive. And so everything is positive in the first quadrant, and that's why we call it A. All ratios, sine, cos, and tan, are all positive in the first quadrant. Now, I preempted there and put an S. So for quadrant two, we've got... Um, the radius arm might be over here somewhere, so we'll put that in somewhere here. So to find the acute angle, which is what we're after, we're looking for the acute angle, and in a further video we'll explain why fully, but basically we're after acute angles there, 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 and there. So it's an acute angle from the x-axis, acute meaning uh, up to 90 degrees, zero up to 90 degrees, not inclusive. Okay, we're going to look now at the uh, second quadrant, so moving past here. And remember, we're kind of, with these radiance arms, we're, we're actually looking at points on the circumference that the, the arm points to. And if we look at something over here, we can actually apply the symmetry from the first quadrant over here. So if we're looking at something like 120 degrees, you know, it can be sine, cos, or tan, but if we're looking at 120 degrees, we're actually looking at um, the mirror image of this angle here, which would be 30 degrees, because 100, um, sorry, 120 would go 30 into there, and another 60, I should say. So we like the mirror image of 60 degrees. So I'll look at that a bit more in the next video. However, over here, once we get to this point here, x values from the origin out to wherever they are. So this point here that the radius arm is pointing to, now that it's swung around to here, is x that way, which is negative, and y is still positive. So you basically have um, for sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite, we're going to use the small angle here, the 
the acute angle because we're going to make it symmetrical to what we would see there. So we're going to copy what we did in uh, quadrant one and apply it in quadrant two using the symmetry because the lengths will be the same. We've just got to be careful of the sine. So opposite over hypotenuse for sine is positive over a positive. So all sine values will be positive and hence we can write S there. And cosine is adjacent which is x over hypotenuse which is 1. The radius arm is always positive so that's a positive over a negative which yields a negative. Tan is opposite over adjacent y over x which is a positive over a negative as well. So they're, they're negative and that one's a positive so only sine is positive. You could repeat the process in quadrant 3 with um, your radius arm like that and you would see that you would get only tan positive there and only cosine positive there. So that's a brief introduction to the unit circle.